okay, honestly, another scary insect to deal with. I feel like by now we're probably waiting for like a plague of locusts to come and just kill us all. But these Asian and Asian European gypsy moths have been found in Washington state, the same place where the hornets were first seen in the US, as well as many other American states and Canadian provinces. And there's such a problem that Governor Jay Lindsay has even issued an emergency proclamation because the infestations could become really, really bad. Ugh! Like, have I not dealt with enough? 2020, give me a bloody break. What is up, you guys? Hope you're having an awesome day. I am your host, Eamon Hassan. Welcome back to another video. And I'm sorry that I have to be the one filling you in on all the scary shit that's happening. But I mean, I guess it's better that we're just, you know, informed. But still, I hope you guys are holding up well. Tell me in the comments below how you guys are handling everything that's going on. I know times are really tough right now. And if we can just help each other out in the comments, just you know, be nice to each other, spread positive vibes. I hope you like that. But either way, let's just get straight into this one. These are the top 10 scary Asian gypsy moth facts that you should know. Sadly, after number 10 is infestation. Now these little shits pose a serious threat of infestation. These moths are known to strip trees, bushes, and shrubs entirely, pretty much any plant you can think of, which obviously is an issue. They can entirely destroy crops that we would otherwise eat, as well as food sources for various types of wildlife. These moths can even wipe out entire forests, which is incredibly bad considering A, global warming, and B, a loss of habitat for wildlife. Yes, basically, if the infestation happens, we're pretty much screwed. Yay. Coming in at nine are the females. Girl power! Yeah. Now, female moths are capable of laying thousands of eggs, meaning thousands of hungry caterpillars, which will then turn into thousands of terrifying moths, which will then give birth to thousands and thousands of more eggs. And so the cycle continues, and ain't nobody got time for that. Oh, and apparently these mommy moths lay eggs that are like covered in a bunch of tiny hairs. Now that kind of seems like an irrelevant fact, but the idea of slimy little eggs covered in hair is just not something that I enjoy. You know what I mean? At number eight, we have cluelessness. Not only are these moths a complete pain in the ass, they're also dumb as shit. But they seem to have no rules about where they lay their eggs. The Government of Canada website mentions that they lay their eggs on rocks, trees, logs, piles of wood, and all that sort of natural stuff that we can easily avoid. But they are also known to lay their eggs on lawn furniture, cars, under recreation equipment, birdhouses, and more. Most of which is stuff that you use fairly regularly. I mean, I guess if you inspect these things, it'll make it easy to destroy the nest. But it also means that they're not exactly afraid of humans. Thank God they aren't venomous though, because then we'd really be in the shit set. Like the seven sort are medical effects. But the Asian gypsy moth has hair on its eggs that can cause some pretty serious rashes if it touches their skin. Now the rashes won't kill you, but the fact that they cause a reaction makes it that much more difficult to get rid of the nest, especially seeing as one of the only ways to get rid of them is by burning them, and you'll probably have to move them to do so unless you want to burn down a whole forest. You know, we, we can't do that. Plus, like I mentioned, they like laying their eggs on cars and other equipment. I don't know about you, but I don't tend to look for moth eggs whenever I'm just living my daily life. Maybe I should start, you know? Don't know what else 2020 is gonna throw at me, right? Ha ha ha, very funny. Now, at number six is determination. That the male moths can fly for incredibly long distances and not get tired. But I've always low-key just been under the impression that something that small can only fly for so long before getting tired. Don't ask me why I thought that, it's just a how my brain works. Either way, seeing as I'm literally wrong, this means that once an infestation happens, it's unlikely that it's gonna be contained to just one place. Now, I don't know how quickly these infestations can spread, but something's telling me they're not the kind of creature that likes to take their time. They're like, on to the next, here we go. Coming in at number five is relocation. Now, the moths can relocate without even flying. Somebody and make that make sense to me. I don't get it. Give me the strength to continue this video. Their tiny little larvae are specially designed to be incredibly aerodynamic and they tend to catch a wind wave and float to wherever the wind takes them. They do this on purpose and they plan for it. The larva will spin silk threads and hang from them waiting for a gust of wind to come and take them on their next bit adventure, which will most likely be, you know, to your garage, to your nearest car, you know what it is. I mean, I understand having wanderlust and all, but don't travel somewhere just to eat all its trees. That's just simply rude. And number four, I Plant attacks. The fact that not only are these moth attacks bad for plant life, they also leave the trees more prone to attacks from other insects and diseases. Now these attacks make the trees even more susceptible to defoliation, and in only four years of continued defoliation, this can cause the trees to fully die. And guys, defoliation is quite a hard word to say. 
took me a few tries. Now, if these gypsy mosques are able to do all this on their own, I really can't imagine what sort of damage can be done if they get help from other infestation. Filling an Amprisa is their size. You thought the murder hornets were big? These things are bigger. Well, the females are. Well, the male wingspan comes in at about 40 millimeters long or 1.5 inches. The female wingspan can go to just under three inches long. I guess a massive moth isn't quite as scary as something that can kill you, but I know I still wouldn't want to encounter any of these things. I mean, seriously, why do you have to be that big? You don't even serve a purpose as far as I'm concerned. Why are you even here? She doesn't even go here. Now, number two is their lifespan. Now, this one isn't so much a scary fact as it is one that's just very bizarre to me. Now, apparently, these moths only live for one week as an adult, but I feel like a lot of these tiny insects do, like mayflies and fruit flies, they all live for like a week. Anyway, then they lay their eggs and die pretty much immediately after that. And then they spend up to nine whole months as an egg. And that's pretty much how long I spend in my bed being an egg too, so I feel like I guess we have that in common. Now, I honestly had no idea that moths had the same gestation period as humans. After they hatch, they become larva for a couple of months, then pupae for two weeks. So the lifespan is literally only about a year and they spend three fourths of that as an egg. <laughs> Why is that funny? That's just so funny. How can you be an egg for so long? Either way, for somebody that spends so much time doing nothing, they sure sh** cause a lot of destruction, don't they? And finally, at number one are moths versus hornets. The one V1 match we have all been waiting for all 2020. Forget Habib and McGregor, this is the match we all been waiting for. Whilst moths are actually the one type of insect that hornets enjoy eating. Again, not really a scary fact, but definitely one that could lead to some interesting crossover of infestations. Not that we were looking for that, but I guess someone answered our prayers. Can you honestly just, just humor me people? Can you imagine if we get a news article that says something like giant murder hornets control infestation of Asian gypsy moths. I still won't be thanking the hornets, not for a long shot, but at least some good will come out of them. And then our trees and wildlife will be safe from these destructive and invasive moths and we can just, you know, live happily ever after. And that is it for today's video guys. Asian gypsy moths, what are you like? What are you like? Let me know what you guys thought in the comments below. As always, I'm your host, Iman Hassan, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye. But these Asian and Asian European gypsy moths have been found in Washington state, the same place where the hornets were first seen in the US. But the moths can even wipe out entire forests, which is incredibly bad considering A, global warming, and B, a loss of habitat for wildlife. <sighs> they seem to have no rules about where, where you, where you they lay their eggs. <laughs> The rashes now, will, now, now, the, now, now the rashes won't kill you, but the fact that they cause a reaction that can make it all the more diff. Uh, I don't know about that. Like, I don't know about that fact. That seems a bit shoddy. <laughs> and I don't even mean they walk or crawl long distances. Their tiny little lava are especially. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> now, I don't even mean that they can walk or crawl to their next destination. Destination. Um, I've given up now. The fact that not only are these moth attacks bad for plant life, they also leave the trees more... Uh, these attacks make the trees even more susceptible to defoliation. These attacks... These attacks... These attacks... Now, if these gypsy moths are able to do all this on their own, I can't even imagine what sort of damage they could do if they get a help... I think I want to cry. If they get a help from the other... <laughs> If these gypsy now if these gypsy moths can do all this damage on their own, I really wonder what they can inflict if they get a help. F <laughs>